We're just having a talk about the sheer scale of this event, uh, the number of people that have come down here to really set the tone for Saudi Arabia going forward. Uh, reforms are always going to be about credibility, about the ability to execute. What convinces you that this is a government that can get it right? Well, I think the scale of this event has been incredible. Three and a half thousand uh, participants, 2,000 people coming from outside of uh, the kingdom. And the quality of the speakers, the quality of the participants, I mean, huge kudos. Um, so it's a signal about the openness or, and willingness of the kingdom to engage with foreign uh, participants. I think it's been incredibly successful. Uh, it's obviously been a very ambitious reform agenda over the last year and a half, an incredible amount of work done, be it on both the public side, but also the, uh, also the social uh, and uh, private side. So I think there's also been a lot of interest from foreign participants coming in to see where, how real and how achievable these goals are. And I think generally over the last two, two and a half days, there's been a lot of positive surprise about the commitment to these reforms uh, and potentially the, uh, the willingness and ability to actually deliver on them. What's going to be the toughest part about this reform process? Because we've had many, many precedents in the past about countries trying to turn things around, tearing up the rule book, setting the tone with global capital. Uh, What's going to be the tricky part here? Well, it's a huge uh, restructuring of the economy here. I mean, amazing and continued reliance uh, and dominant reliance on oil moving to a much more diversified economy. I mean, as you say, this isn't a new story. I think what gives people relative uh, faith and relative conviction this can occur is obviously the very strong leadership that's being shown by the Crown Prince uh, and more broadly the support uh, that he has. But I don't think anyone's underestimating the scale of the project, be it to 2030, but even further, 2040, 2050. Let's talk a little bit about asset allocation. Now, how then, or what are you telling clients in terms of getting exposure to the Saudi story that's got a lot of people excited? Well, I think people are very excited about the potential for reforms here and what could happen. I'm not sure talking to delegates here, there's necessarily a wholesale shift in sentiment towards wanting to deploy capital into the kingdom at this stage. There's optimism about the potential in the future, but I'm not necessarily sure this one conference has fundamentally changed. I mean, typically the kingdom has been a source of capital for our global investments rather than a destination. And so the movements with respect to allowing foreign participation in the public equity market are definitely a great step towards greater foreign participation, but we still need inclusion in the wider uh, indices, uh, particularly the MSCI Emerging Market Equity ind Indice. And I think that's probably the first next big step for foreign investors in a more meaningful way, starting to do work uh, on the kingdom uh, and starting to deploy capital here. And that, that's exactly the key thing, because if you look at the percentage of total market capitalization on the Saudi benchmark index in terms of foreign participants, it's still a very, very low number. We're talking one to two percent. You're saying the MSCI Emerging Market Upgrade is going to be the next logical catalyst. Uh, what about uh, government bonds? There seems to be plenty of demand for, for that kind of asset class. Uh, Look, I mean, there's demand for yield anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, so I think that plays. But in terms of the increasing focus on the investment opportunities from the more mainstream uh, investor base, I do actually think that uh, MSCI inclusion is the key step. Again, not just in terms of public equity market participation, but more broadly private uh, participation as well. Because it will force analysts to actually look at the opportunities in much more detail in the region rather than a relatively small proportion of the foreign investor community going off benchmark, if you will, to try and take yeah. opportunities. As you've been talking to a lot of the people here on the ground, uh, what else has struck you about this pursuit of transformation that Saudi Arabia has, has decided to embark on? Scale. I mean, it is incredibly impressive, and I think it's impressed delegates generally here. Again, the shift between seeing Saudi as a source of capital for foreign investments versus being an investment destination, I think we're still in the transition and early stages of that transition. Um, so while there's a lot of positive sentiment towards the signalling of this, uh, of this uh, conference, uh, towards some of the initiatives like NEOM, etc., I, I don't sense there's, again, a wholesale willingness tomorrow to start deploying uh, huge amounts of money.